Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to day four of Solving Systems with Graphing. Today, we're going to take a look at what else can happen. So basically, when solving systems, there are three things that can happen. We're going to talk about each of these three things that can happen, and we'd like you to write them all down in your notes. Okay, the first thing that can happen, and this is what's been happening as we've been solving systems so far, the lines intersect and there is one solution. Our solution is the ordered pair where the two lines cross each other. And we've been working on, um, on systems, and this is exactly what's been happening as we've worked on them so far. Okay, the second thing that can happen is that when we graph the lines, they turn out to be parallel to each other. Now we know that parallel lines will never intersect and therefore there is no solution to the system. Okay, the third thing that can happen and in this diagram it looks like there is only one line. However, we know that in a system of equations there are at least two equations. What it turns out happening is that the two equations really are the same line. In this situation, they're drawn twice, one right on top of the other. That means that every point on that line will work in both of the equations, and therefore, there are infinitely many solutions, which means there are an endless number of solutions that will work in both equations. All right, let's take a look at an example. Please write down these two equations, this system, and we're going to go ahead and solve this system graphically. Remember that our first step for solving systems graphically is to make sure that our equations are in slope-intercept form. I'm going to start with the blue equation on the left, and that is definitely not in the y equals mx plus b form. So I'm going to have to do some inverse operations to solve for y. Okay, now I'm going to rewrite this because um, those minuses sometimes mix me up. I'm going to change that to add the opposite, and I'm going to write that negative y as negative 1y. Okay, so I need to get rid of that 2x. I'm going to subtract 2x on both sides to make that happen. And that means my 2x's are going to cancel each other out. So when I rewrite what I have left, on the left-hand side I have negative 1y is equal to, and on the right I have negative 2x minus 1 or plus negative 1. Okay, I can see that um, my y is definitely not isolated yet because I still have that negative 1 hanging out next to it. So I'm going to take that and divide by negative 1. That means on the other side of my equal sign, all of my other terms also need to get divided by negative 1. So on the left-hand side, my negative 1's cancel each other out. And if I rewrite what I have left over, I have y equals positive 2x plus positive 1. Okay, moving to my other equation in my system. Um, this equation is also not in slope-intercept form, so it looks like I'm going to have to do an inverse operation. I need to get rid of that 3 that's hanging out with the y, and since 3 hanging out next to y means multiply, my inverse operation is going to be divide by 3. Okay, on the other side, my all my other terms over there also get divided by 3. And my 3's are going to cancel each other out. Rewriting what I have left over is going to give me y equals 2x minus 4. Some of us might like to write that as y equals 2x plus negative 4. But either way is fine because these two things mean the same thing. Okay, so now that both of my equations are in slope-intercept form, I'm going to graph both of them on the same coordinate plane. Now for my blue equation, b, my starting point on the y-axis, is 1. m, my slope, is 2, but you guys know how I feel about that. I'm going to write that as a fraction so I can think about it in terms of rise over run. Okay, so I'm going to put a starting point at positive 1, and remember from there, I'm going up to right 1, up to right 1, up to right 1, and then I'm going to grab my straight edge and draw the line. 
Before I do, I think what I'm going to do is just head over to the other equation, the red one on the right, and identify that over here my b is negative 4. And um, that means my starting point is at negative 4 on the y-axis, which is right here. And my slope is 2, which is 2 over 1. So from that starting point, I'm going up 2, right 1, up 2, right 1, up 2, right 1. And now I'm going to grab my straight edge and draw both of those lines. Okay, so remember that um, our third step is to write our solution. And in all of our other assignments, we took a look at our solution as where the two lines intersect or crossed one another. But these lines are parallel. They have the exact same slope, and we can continue these points on and on and on. They're never going to intersect. So we say that this system has no solution. Let's take a look at another example. Hope you guys are making sure you write these examples in your notes. Um, our first equation is not in slope-intercept form, so I'm going to go ahead and start doing some inverse operations to get that into slope-intercept form. Okay, our x's are going to cancel each other out over there on the left. And I now have 3y equals negative 1x plus 12. Okay, and my next inverse operation is going to be divide by 3. So everything gets divided by 3. And my 3's on the left will cancel each other out. And when I rewrite what I have left, I get y equals negative 1 third x plus 4. Okay, my second equation is already in slope-intercept form. And you might be saying to yourself, hey, wait a minute. Once I got the first equation into slope-intercept form, it's exactly the same as the second equation. That might be an indicator right away that, uh-oh, hey, these two are exactly the same uh, equation, and that's going to be our third possibility of something that can happen. The lines are the same, which means we're going to get infinitely many solutions. Let's go ahead and graph that and check it out. Okay, so my blue equation, uh, B, my starting point, is 4, and my slope, M, is negative 1 over 3 which means we're going to start on the y-axis at positive 4, and from there our slope is going to go down 1, right 3, down 1, right 3, etc. Since my red equation on the right also has a starting point of positive 4, and same exact slope, negative 1 over 3, we are going to have the same points, and when we grab our ruler and graph, the line is exactly the same. Okay, so when this happens and the line is exactly the same, we say um, that this solution has, or this system has many solutions. Sometimes we say it has infinitely many solutions, and sometimes we say many solutions. Both of those really mean the same thing, that we could list an endless number of solutions because, as we know, um, this line goes on and on forever, much past our, our uh, coordinate plane. And we could list uh, endless ordered pairs that work in both of the equations. Okay, and just as a little wrap up, uh, the three things that can happen is, um, number one, our lines intersect and we get exactly one solution. That's the ordered pair where the lines cross one another. That is what happens most of the time. Secondly, second thing that can happen is that our lines turn out to be parallel and therefore they will never intersect and therefore there's no solution. And third, we actually get the two equations are the exact same line, which means there are many, many solutions to that system. All right, guys, have a great day.